Hello and welcome to this user interface overview video for ANSYS Discovery. The goal of this video is to familiarize you with the interface and the user experience. Let's get started. Upon opening Discovery for the first time, you'll be greeted by our welcome page. This page allows you to configure Discovery to your liking by giving you the options to choose your default stage, theme, and view controls. You can also click this button here to be taken to our settings panel where you can further configure the Discovery interface to your liking. Also on this page, you will find other tabs such as our Getting Started Guide, which provides extremely detailed content that will help you get acclimated with Discovery. Additionally, you can access our What's New section, where you can read all about all of our new enhancements by each release. Finally, you can access our Learn section. On this tab, you can see we have a variety of different learning resources, ranging from our ANSYS Innovation Space, our online help documentation, as well as a direct link to our ANSYS Discovery Learning content on the ANSYS Learning Hub. Additionally, you can also access our verification for our Explore Mode Solver. Let's go ahead and close this welcome page by clicking this X to access our homepage. The homepage is our launching point for creating or opening a project and will be your default view if this was not your first time opening Discovery. On this page, you can see we have access to our recent files, samples, and our interactive tours. On our Samples tab, you will find a variety of setup simulation models that cover a wide range of simulation types like static structural, topology optimization, and fluid flow. Additionally, we can navigate to our Interactive Tour section by clicking this button. These tours are our fantastic learning resources as they are interactive modules that will guide you through the granular steps of a specific workflow, such as part design, or various different simulation types. Above these three tabs, you will see the buttons of New, Browse, and Learn. The New button creates a blank project where we are able to create a new design with our integrated modeling tools. If you do choose New, you can still import models by dragging files into the Discovery window from the Windows File Explorer. As you can see, we have the option to open the file or insert the file into our current project where it will be added to the existing geometry that you have open. When choosing Browse, we are placed into a new window where we can access our recent files once again, but also a variety of other locations on our PC where we can load a geometry or even a saved Discovery project. As a quick note, if you are opening a new geometry, we highly recommend opening the native CAD format rather than a neutral format like a step file. Let's go ahead and close this window by clicking this X. Now that we are back at our homepage, we can finally click the Learn button where we will be taken back to the learning resources that we previously reviewed. Let's close this window and navigate back to the sample section of our homepage. From here, let's choose a sample model to open. After opening a sample model, you should be placed in our Explore mode, which leverages our GPU-based solver. Inside of Discovery, you have access to the three stages of Model, Explore, and Refine. To identify which mode you are in, simply review the Stage Manager at the bottom center of your screen. To access one of the three stages in Discovery, you can click either of these arrows. When changing between modes, you will notice that our ribbon will be updated based on which mode you are in. If we are in the simulation modes of Explore or Refine, you will see Discovery automatically chooses our simulation tab where we can access our simulation focused tools. If we navigate to Model, you will notice that the ribbon will automatically change to our Design tab where we have access to our Direct Modeling Toolkit. Before we continue to other parts of the interface, let's briefly review the available tabs. First, you will find our Design tab that allows us to access our Direct Modeling Toolkit that will allow us to edit or create geometry regardless of its original source. Following Design, we have our Sub-D tab which gives us access to our subdivisional modeling tools great for organic geometry edits. The Display and Measure tabs following the Design and Sub-D tabs provide us with various view controls and CAD measuring tools respectively. Next, we have our Facets tab, which gives us a dedicated set of tools for working with and creating faceted geometry. We have tools to clean up, repair, create, and modify faceted geometry, as well as a set of tools meant for reverse engineering faceted geometries back into solid components. On our Repair tab, we will find a variety of options for fixing any unexpected geometry issues we may encounter. On the left side of this tab, you will find our Solidify section. If you ever find that your geometry was imported as a set of surfaces rather than a solid object, you can use these tools to convert these surfaces back into a solid geometry. 
Additionally, on this tab, you will find a variety of other tools to fix edges and curves, as well as the ability to adjust and improve the quality of faces on your bodies. Finally, we have our Check Geometry tool, which will help us identify issues with our geometry and even giving you the option to automatically fix these problems. I always recommend running this tool when something is not working properly, but many models import cleanly with our default import healing options. Before our simulation tab, you will find our prepare tab that includes a variety of tools meant to help you develop a more simulation ready model. First, you will find the tools to extract beam and shell geometries for simulation in other tools like ANSYS Mechanical or ANSYS Fluent. Next, you will find our two categories of structural preparation tools for creating idealized bolt and weld beam elements. Following this area, we have our generate section, which will help us create bodies for CFD simulation. Additionally, on this tab, you will find other tools to identify and remove various aspects of your geometry that may cause oddities or unexpected behavior in your simulation, such as for threads, holes, logos, and more. Next, you will find our shared topology controls. And finally, you can see our geometry transfer section, which will allow you to transfer your geometry to other ANSYS tools after your geometry preparation is completed. Finally, we come to our simulation tab that controls all of the simulation related aspects of discovery. As you can see, we can control our material definitions, apply physics boundary conditions, post-process our simulation results, and much more, including transferring our discovery simulations to other ANSYS flagship tools. Now that we've reviewed the tabs on our ribbon, let's briefly review our other components of our interface. On the left side of our screen, you will see we have a geometry and a physics tree. In the geometry tree, we can hide or show objects with the eye icon, and we can activate or suppress objects for simulation with this other toggle button. Below our geometry tree, you will find our physics tree, which will contain our material definitions as well as our physics boundary conditions. In the bottom left and right corners of your screen, you will find our view and results arcs. The view arc provides you with various controls related to the graphics rendering of the CAD bodies and discovery. The results arc allows us to access a variety of post-processing tools great for helping understand the results of our simulations. In the bottom center of our screen, you will see our stage navigator that we reviewed earlier in this video, but you will also see a series of other hex shapes. The large hex in the center is our simulation information display, which will provide us with the state of our simulation, as well as provide us with an icon indicating which type of physics we are solving. You can hover your mouse over the simulation information display, and it will highlight the bodies that are participating in the physics simulation. Finally, you will also see a small hex that includes a dialog bubble. Clicking this button will open one of our messages panels, where Discovery can display a variety of messages related to errors, warnings, or simply informational messages. You can also find messages in this location, our status bar, but these are mainly related to geometry operations. Before closing out this video, I would like to give you a brief introduction on how to use any of the tools in Discovery. Let's choose the Design tab on our ribbon and click on the Pull tool. As soon as we do so, our heads-up display will open. This heads-up display is how we interact with each tool in the interface, as well as control a variety of different sub-options for the tool that we have open. You'll notice that as I click on various faces of my geometry, the heads-up display will follow and center around my selection. If you do not like this behavior, you can simply click and drag the heads-up display to a desired location using this button here. If you wish to have the heads-up display follow your selection once again, simply unselect this movement button and it will reset its location. To close the heads-up display, simply hit the escape key two times. As one final note, you can access a variety of commonly used ribbon tools directly from this small hex. Clicking this hex will open our halo. On the outside of the halo, you will see a variety of categories of tools, such as our simulation boundary conditions, where the icons in the halo mirror the icons on the ribbon. In the center of the halo, you can change the tools on the outer ring of the halo by clicking any of these three icons, which will allow us to see simulation, modeling, and selection tools on the outside ring of the halo. While learning a new application and interface may seem intimidating, I encourage you to stay optimistic about your learning journey. We have a variety of learning tools built within Discovery to help guide you. But as I close this video, I'll leave you with my favorite feature, our overlay help system. 
When opening a tool in Discovery, you may see some icons that you are not familiar with. In this instance, simply hit F1 on your keyboard to open our overlay help system. As you can see, it will provide context-sensitive help based on the tool that you have open, regardless if it is a simulation or geometry-focused tool. Thank you for watching this user interface overview video for ANSYS Discovery. We hope that you found it helpful. Thank you. Take care.